Hello, I'm Marcus Balsam. In today's video, we are going to talk about an increase in the fetal heart rate during labor and delivery and the issues that this can present for a baby. This video is, is really the flip side of a video that I just did when I talked about a decrease fetal heart rate during labor and delivery. Uh, and that condition is called bradycardia. When you have an increase in the fetal heart rate during labor and delivery, that condition is going to be called tachycardia. Now for this video, our definition of tachycardia is going to be when the baseline is up above 160 beats per minute. In general, a normal baseline for a baby is going to be about 120 to about 160 beats per minute. And if you have a, a fetal heart rate that begins to get higher than that 160, the baseline begins to move into the 170s or the 180s. Now we're looking at, at the condition fetal tachycardia. Fetal tachycardia, when it's coupled with other issues on the electronic fetal heart monitor, say for example, minimal variability, or you've got issues with late deceleration patterns, when we take all of these things into consideration, and there could be some more other issues that could be present during labor and delivery, these things might suggest that the strip or that the, the, uh, the electronic fetal heart monitor, the, the readings are in a non-reassuring Place. They're in a non-reassuring mode, uh, so to speak. And so when you have a non-reassuring strip, that could be a strong indication that the baby is no longer tolerating a vaginal delivery. And when you have a baby that's no longer tolerating a vaginal delivery, there could be other issues that could be present for the baby and those issues can be you know problematic in some instances so the purpose of this video today is to kind of help you understand this fetal tachycardia and why it can be problematic for a baby if it is coupled with other problematic readings on the electronic fetal heart monitor one more thing now as it pertains to fetal tachycardia there's a lot of things that can cause it one of the main ones that we can see is when it's maternal fever when mom is is suffering from a fever so if, if you have more questions i wanted to talk with you about this today uh, because if you have more questions maybe you're here today because your baby has a hie diagnosis and there were issues with during labor and delivery for you maybe there was some issues with a high uh, uh, fetal heart rate maybe your baby's heart rate was going was in the tachycardia range or maybe the heart rate was in the bradycardia range and you had other issues that were present on the uh, on the readings with the monitor. So if you have these types of questions, there's a telephone number down below. What I invite you to do is to go ahead and pick up the phone and call me. I talk with families all the time about these issues. We talked about fetal tachycardia today, bradycardia, uh, HIE, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, CP, MAS, uh, a whole host of other issues that can be present. Um, one more thing before I go, I practice law here in the state of Maryland. And if you contact me because this video is on the internet and you reach out to me and you're not in Maryland, please understand that if this is something that we think that we can assist you with, that we have to use co-counsel or local counsel. In other words, an attorney in your state. And that's something that we can try to help assist you with. Uh, but I just want to make sure that you understood that local counsel or co-counsel aspect of things if you're not in Maryland. All right, that's going to be it for today's quick educational video. Again, I'm Marcus Boston, and I'm one of the childbirth injury and medical malpractice attorneys practicing law here in the state of Maryland at Boston Law Group, LLC. We'll see you next time. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.